Columbus, Ohio is a fantastic city to live. Are you thinking about moving or relocating here and trying to do some research? You're probably wondering, what's it like to live there? Or am I gonna like it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna discuss seven things about Columbus you absolutely need to know if you're thinking about moving here. If you're thinking about buying a new house, make sure you watch the last one because it's super, super important to know. It all starts right now. So let's go. If this is the first time to this channel, then hello and welcome. My name is Mark Van Stein. I make videos about what it's like living in Columbus, Ohio. Some of the videos I cover are things like the best schools, the best neighborhoods, areas, cost of living, where should I live, and things you absolutely need to know about Columbus. My goal is to give the viewer a really good feel on what it's like to live here in the capital city. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm gonna give it to you straight. That's just my personality. I would rather have you know exactly what you're getting into rather than move here and be uninformed. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up button, or even better, leave me a comment or a question below. If you're interested in learning more about Columbus and its many suburbs, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm making new videos every week, not only about Columbus, but its exterior suburbs as well. Most importantly, if you're thinking about relocating or moving here, make your life a little easier and give me a call. I'm a licensed Remax Realtor and I've been helping people relocate to the Columbus area for the past 18 years. You can call me, shoot me a text, send me an email. I literally get people reaching out every week and I absolutely love it. Number one, the housing here is pretty expensive. Now that's going to really depend on where you're moving from. If you're relocating from LA, San Francisco, or Boston, then you might think you've absolutely hit the lottery. <laughs> but if you're coming from Texas or another one of the Western states, the housing here is gonna be much more expensive. Currently, the average home price in Columbus, Ohio is just over $300,000, but that does not tell the whole story. If you wanna live in one of the more popular areas like the Short North or better school district like Olentangy Schools, then the housing cost is going to increase. Unfortunately, many of the websites which give salary and cost of living averages can't factor in the more expensive specific areas and neighborhoods in town. It can be a little bit confusing because I'm sure you have a certain lifestyle and probably a good idea of the type of housing you need. Just getting a general average of all of Central Ohio may not be helpful. If you haven't already, check out a couple of my other videos on this channel where I go into a deeper dive into the cost of living using myself as an example, some additional information on specific neighborhoods and suburbs around the city. Number two is property taxes. I talk about property taxes a lot in the videos on this channel for a good reason because they are super high and they contribute so much to the cost of housing. When you are looking at different areas around Columbus, make sure you completely understand the property taxes, how they are calculated because it gets confusing. Even I get confused sometimes. Unfortunately, there are only there are so many variables that go into it, it's really hard to give an average for one specific area. I get this question a lot. Hey Mark, what are the property taxes in Worthington or fill in the blank area? Well, in Worthington, for example, you could live in the city of Worthington or you could live in the city of Columbus. You could also possibly live in a township. That township may or may not have its own police and fire departments. You probably see where I'm going with all this. Luckily, the Delaware and Franklin County Auditor Sites, which are the two main counties that make up Central Ohio, have really good tax estimators. Just plug in the address of a property that looks interesting, and most importantly, add the new value, and it will give you a great estimate of its new yearly taxes. Number three is the weather. Columbus weather is pretty crappy, unless you like cloudy days and not seeing the sun. Because Columbus sits in a big river valley, we get lots of cloud cover, which is nice in the summertime, but awful in the winter. I mean, you can go days in the winter without seeing the sun. Then factor in the short winter days, well, it can get pretty depressing. The other thing that stinks about the winter is it often hovers around 32 degrees. 
So instead of getting snow, we get 35 degree freezing rain. In fact, snow is really hit or miss in Columbus. A couple of years ago, I think we got a total of less than 12 inches all winter long. The summers can be equally brutal. It seems like we go from winter straight to summer anymore. In the summertime, especially in July and August, we will get into the 90s. We can also get pretty humid days as well. Now, it's not like Houston or Atlanta humid, but it's pretty humid. Um, the one positive thing about the weather here is we do get all four seasons. Spring and fall in Ohio can be quite lovely. Number four is you are going to need a car. Columbus is definitely a driving city. Now, it is possible to get around on mass transit, but unless you live in the metro area or close, it's pretty difficult. Columbus mass transit is called COTA, which is our bus system. And like I said, it's pretty good if you live in the metro area. But if you're moving from a larger city like a New York City or Chicago, you're gonna be a little disappointed. I moved to New York City after college and sold my car before I moved, and I freaked out because I'd always had a car and I thought, how am I going to get around? I felt like I was going to be trapped there. Well, luckily I sold it because I would have to pay an arm and a leg to park it in Manhattan. I really wouldn't have needed it. In Columbus, you're going to need it. The city has sprawled so much in the last 60 years, it keeps pushing further out. In fact, in the early 2000s, the downtown area was dead. There were less than 3,000 people living there. Columbus had become this commuter city. 5 p.m. on a Friday, you didn't see anybody down on the streets. Luckily, all that has changed and we have a vibrant downtown again, but you're still gonna need a car, unfortunately. Number five is fencing. Many communities in Columbus, especially newer ones, don't allow fencing. This really upsets my clients who come from different parts of the country where everyone has a fence around their property. What's the old saying? Good fences make good neighbors. Now, there are plenty of neighborhoods around the city that allow fencing, but quite a few don't. The older communities with no HOA rules almost always allow it. The newer communities, if they allow it, have a specific rule for types and style of fencing. One of the easiest ways to know if a neighborhood allows fencing is just drive around and see if any of the neighbors have it. Sometimes, you can also tell if you go down Google Maps and look at the aerial view, now, if a house has a pool, it's going to have some sort of fencing around it. The HOA rules are not going to supersede the rules or the laws of the city or the county, that state. A pool has to have a fence around it for safety reasons. My experience has been that most people want fences because they have pets or they don't want to worry about their children. Well, with regards to dogs, many people, including myself, I've got a 70 pound burner doodle named Bo, have invisible fences, which to my surprise are very effective. Trust me, my dog learned very quickly where he could go and where he couldn't go. So if you fall in love with a neighborhood or a home that doesn't allow fences, know there are some options. Number six is the lot size of properties here in Columbus, Ohio. Many people moving to town mistakenly assume that Columbus is out in the middle of cornfields, so the land must be inexpensive and the lot's huge. This is completely incorrect. The average lot size on an average priced home is going to be between 0.2 and 0.3 of an acre. Now there are always exceptions in communities depending on the location and the shape of the lot. Of course, some of this is also going to depend on the price and size of the home. Sometimes when you get into older communities, the lots can be a little bit larger. For example, the house that I grew up in, in the neighborhood I grew up in, in Worthington, was built in the early 1970s. Most of the homes in that community had half acre lots. This is because the land just wasn't as valuable as it is today. There are lots of older communities all around Columbus like this. If you definitely want to have a little bit more land with your house and don't mind living in a non-planned community, then there are going to be many more options available to you. Lastly, number seven is new construction or new homes being built. And this kind of goes along with the last one with regards to the lot size. 98% of new construction is being done on the outskirts of the city. So if you had your heart set on a brand new home, the likelihood that it'll be further away from downtown is pretty high. You see Columbus or all of Central Ohio is being developed from the inside out. So there isn't a lot of land available for new development. The land that comes available is usually very, very expensive. 
Upper Arlington, which is located just west of Ohio State University, a very desirable community, has been built out for decades. Any new homes being built there, someone has either torn down an existing home just for the lot, or there may have been a home on a double lot that could be split. Either way, it's quite expensive just for the land. Most of the new subdivisions are going to be on the outskirts of town, contributing to all the sprawl we're having. It's much easier to build on the outskirts because most of the land is agricultural fields. The downside to that, that these new communities is that they're further away from the city and don't have that mature feel with the large trees that many people find desirable. Well, I hope I didn't turn you too much off on the city. Like I mentioned, I think Columbus is a great place to live, but I told you I was going to be completely transparent. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And if you're interested in knowing more about Columbus, please subscribe to the channel or check out some of the other videos on this channel where I'm completely transparent as well. If you are moving or relocating to Columbus, make sure you give myself and my team a call. Moving to a new city can be super stressful. Let me and my team make your life a little bit easier, helping you find the perfect home. You can call, text, email me. My contact information is below and at the end of the video. Until next time.